Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, the Brooke Ashley, and today we are here to discuss The Real Housewives of Orange County, season 16, episode 6. And let me start off by saying that I still feel the same way about Noella. I know that quite a few of you guys actually like Noella. You all let me know that down in the comments. That's great. I am all for us liking different people. That's what makes the world go round. But as for me, I'm not feeling Noella. I don't like her antics. I don't like her attitude. Just something very phony about her. I just can't get into it. And she solidified it for me in this episode, especially towards the end. But with all that being said, let's just jump right on into this recap because we don't have a minute to spare. We start this episode off with Heather and her oldest daughter, Max, and they are at this chakra place. So we see them getting their chakras red, and I think that Heather's chakra is all blocked. So she's like, that's not good. I mean, who wants a messy chakra? Heather says that she loves getting a reading done anywhere, anytime, any place. And then we see a flashback of her getting a psychic reading done, of her getting um, a tarot reading done. Like she loves it. Like that is her thing. Now we see Heather mentioning that Max wrote a book to the shop owner. And she goes on to ask if they could come to her daughter's book launch party to do readings. The woman's like, sure, we can do that. That's not a problem. I'm like, Heather, when it comes to spending a coin, the folks will be there. Like, you already know the answer to that question. <laughs> and I know you pay well too. So that lady was gonna be there with bells on, but I digress. Heather says in her confessional that she's super proud of her daughter and how she does not know many 17 year olds who have a book out. Now, Heather, this is no shade. You guys know that I am all for, if you have the coins, go and do it. But I'm like, sis, you guys have millions of dollars. You guys have fame. She has the access. So of course, it's not out of the realm of possibility that she would be able to launch a book. I'm just saying. <laughs> and again, that is awesome that Max put her mind to it and she has her own book out. Like that's a big accomplishment in itself. Heather continues by saying that Max also has social anxiety. And when the pandemic hit and the lockdown began, she became a shut-in. Like she wasn't coming out of her room. She got super depressed. But on the flip side of it, she started her own podcast. And that's where the idea to launch her own book started. So in the end, her daughter turned lemons into lemonade. And now she's thriving. Then we end the scene with Max meeting a new friend and it was one of the other girls who works at the chakra shop and they exchange numbers and so Max is like, are you straight? And the girl's like, no. So Max is like, yup, girl, you know, me too. I could sense it a mile away and they become fast friends. And I think we saw her at the book party later on in the episode. So I said, look at that. Look at Max making friends. So now we jump over to a short scene. Noelle is at home. Gina comes over and Noelle is like, I have to tell you something. Guess what I found out? I found out where James is. So Gina's like, wait, what? Like, is he still in Puerto Rico? Like, what's the deal? Noelle reveals that she found out that James is in Mykonos. So Gina's like, where's Mykonos? And I was like, Gina... You haven't heard of Mykonos? I thought that everybody knew Mykonos. It's like one of the hottest spots in Greece. Again, how did Gina get on this show? Can somebody let me know down in the comments? I want this to be her last season because I just can't take it anymore. <laughs> and I'm trying to be nice. But Gina is just not it. So now Gina's like, girl, how did you find this out? And we find out that Noella found one of James' credit cards that he forgot to cut off. So since she has access to it, she's been tracking all of his charges and she sees that he's living it up in Greece. Now, anybody with common sense knows that James is most likely not by himself in Mykonos. He is definitely with another woman because that's also a very romantic spot too. 
So now Noella says, I know this, but I am going to keep quiet about this. I'm not going to blow his spot up because I still need access to this credit card because we still need to eat and pay this rent. So mom's the word, but I just have my good eye on where he goes next. So now Noella has the nerve to say that James is not the man that she thought he was. But again, what kind of man did you think he was? Because when you were dating him for six years, he was married to his first wife. So what kind of character did you think about a man who was seeing you behind his wife's back? Did you really think that he was an upstanding man? Because any man cheating on his wife has very low character. So the joke's on you for thinking that he would be a better man for you. I just don't have a whole lot of sympathy for women who think that they're gonna be the exception with a cheating man. Then we see Gina joke around that Noella needs to get back out and date again. And Noella's like, too soon, like I'm not ready. And then she talks about how she masturbated that morning. I'm like, honey, we didn't need to know that. I mean, yes, for masturbation, that's great, but we don't really need to know your sex life habits, you know? All in all, I think it's a sin and a shame that Noella was with this man and she was not saving some money on the side for a rainy day. Again, I thought that every smart woman knew to have a little stash in case things go left. Too many women are out here trying to secure the man instead of trying to secure their future. Like, you can do both at the same time. Make sure that you are always straight. It's really a damn shame that Noella is living off of some credit card that she has to hope doesn't get cut off by James. I'm still confused as to how she did not have a savings account. I'm like, girl, what were you doing? And wasn't Noella a model? She was getting paid for her modeling gigs, right? So where was your bank account then? I'm just like, girl, what was going on? Again, a lot of stuff isn't making sense, in my opinion. Noella doesn't seem to be that bright. If she was out here with no bank account, no savings account, a hot mess. Now we jump over to the next scene with Dr. Jen, Heather, and Emily, and they're having a spa day. We see them all at this sauna studio, and Heather's paying for this excursion. And we also find out that she's paying for their nail appointments too. So then we see Emily joke around like, I hope we're going out for lunch later. And I was like, Emily, if Heather is paying for the spa and the nail appointment, if you want to go to lunch, then why don't you offer to pay for lunch, right? It shouldn't be all on Heather to pay for everything. Heather's generous. I love generous people but I don't like folks who take advantage. Like offer to pay for the lunch. So they're all sitting in the sauna, having a good time. And I love saunas, so I was getting my life during this scene. So Dr. Jen says, thank you so much for the invite, Heather. And then she adds on that since she makes all the money in her family, she doesn't really have the time for these girls days. So now Emily wants to know if that was always the arrangement where Dr. Jen was the breadwinner for her family. Now, before we get into that, let me just say, I called it. In that first episode, I said, something tells me that Dr. Jen is the breadwinner and this lousy husband of hers is leeching off of her. I get the impression that there's something awry in their marriage that we're going to find out about later on in this season. I don't think that Dr. Jen's husband is that into her. He also seems very emotionally unavailable and very immature. So now Dr. Jen tells his crazy story about how when she and her husband Ryan got married, her ex-boyfriend sued her, I think for like $850,000. He said that all the gifts that he bought her while they were together, those were loans. So she says that that lawsuit put a strain on her marriage from the beginning. So like they never had a fighting chance. So she says that her ex-boyfriend was doing this to hurt her. He was upset that the relationship was over. And 
he was also angry because when they broke up, she married her husband three days later. I said, what? I was so confused by that whole entire story. And it was really confusing because her ex-boyfriend was rich. And when they showed that news clipping, it looked like it said that he was a billionaire. I'm like, why would a billionaire try to sue this woman for the gifts bag? I'm like, there has to be something more to the story because that doesn't make any sense. So that lawsuit put a strain on their marriage. And then she and her husband had a conversation that she would be the breadwinner and he would stay at home with the kids. Let me tell you something right now. I want you to come in close. Hell no. No. Uh -uh. I need for the man to make more money. And I mean a lot more money. Okay? Mm -mm. In my opinion, I don't think it works when the woman is the breadwinner and the man is not. I think it's a whole lot of mess and problems. It's no. Her husband gives me that he just wants to kick his feet up and relax and be taken care of. The whole vibe seems to be off in their marriage. I said, girl, that's a hot mess. I don't know what she saw in her husband. I mean, okay, he's a six pack, but you can go and find somebody else with a six pack who has some money. Dr. Jen? Mm -mm. <laughs> no. I was just shaking my head like, that's a damn shame. You should have never agreed to that kind of arrangement. So Dr. Jen goes on to say how, you know, it's hard and they both try to work on making sure that they don't have resentment for each other. I said, it's too late. Girl, that ship has sailed. So now Emily's a girl, I understand because I thought that me and Shane weren't going to make it at one point. I'm like, I still think that you guys aren't going to make it now. I feel like that's another unequally yoked couple. I don't see any attraction or chemistry between those two. But if Emily likes it, then God bless. And also, Emily is the last person who needs to be giving anybody marriage advice. So now Emily says that she's about to pass out. She needs to get out of that sauna and we see her go over into her bag and she pulls out a turkey sub. So they're like, do you really have a turkey sandwich right now in this sauna? And she's like, yup, you guys want some? And they're just like, girl, really? <laughs> I'm like, you do know that the purpose of a sauna is to get super hot and like sweat out all the toxins, right? Like, what did you think this was gonna be? I feel like Emily did that to have a moment, but the moment really fell flat in my opinion. Again, I just don't see it for Emily or Gina. So anything that they do, I'm gonna be like, okay, girl, I mean, I guess. <laughs> so now we jump over to Heather, Dr. Jen, and Emily at the nail salon. And while they're getting their nails done, Heather lets them know that she and Dr. Terry bought this fabulous land in Idaho but since nobody's there to build, now they're looking at building a house in Cabo. So she's like, would you ladies want to go to Cabo with me? We could do a cute girls trip. And they're like, absolutely. So we see that Heather has also invited Gina when they were at the races in last week's episode. And I said, you already know that Gina was like, absolutely sure. Because Lord knows the last time she was on a vacation. So now Dr. Jen brings up how she extended an olive branch to Noella and she wants them to get together for lunch because she really does want to clear the air. So now Heather says about Noella, I keep hearing that she called me a fake bitch or a phony bitch and I'm not understanding it because I thought that we were cool. I liked her. She was super nice to my daughter. So I'm as confused as to where this energy is coming from. So Dr. Jen says that Noelle is lashing out and how just because she's going through a hard time, that doesn't give you the right to be condescending or rude. And Dr. Jen is absolutely right. Let me just quickly say that if I were Heather, I'd be super confused too, because if I thought that we were cool and we were on our way to having a friendship, I'd be feeling some sort of way 
if I find out that behind my back, you're calling me everything but a child of God. So I definitely feel like Heather is justified in wanting to get to the bottom of, is this true? Like, why is she calling me a bitch? You know, did I do something to her? Like, what's the deal? Now we move on to the next scene with Shannon. She and her daughters are finally in Nashville visiting Shannon's mom. Shannon is super excited. Her mom's super excited to see them. They're out to eat and they start discussing relationships. Baby, I could not stop laughing. Shannon's oldest daughter lets the table know that she's in love with her boyfriend and she wants to get married to her boyfriend. Now, mind you that she's 20 and this is her first love. So we all know how that goes. So now Shannon's like, sweetheart, you were only 20 years old. Like, slow your roll. I got married to your father at 36, okay? Like, you have plenty of time. There's a whole lot of life that needs to be lived. And I agree. <laughs> So now Sophie reveals that her boyfriend is everything that she's ever wanted and he's everything that she didn't see in her father. So now Shannon starts tearing up and then Sophie continues by saying that sometimes she doesn't feel worthy of having this really great boyfriend. So now Shannon starts crying and Shannon's mom says, sweetheart, you can't feel that way. Like you are worthy and don't let what you saw between your mom and dad affect you. That really made me upset to hear that, that she would feel like she's unworthy because of something that she saw from her parents, something that had nothing to do with her. And I was glad to see their grandmother and Shannon just reinforce like, honey, you are worthy. You are a great person. Like, don't ever think that you are enough. Like, you are fine just as you are. Enjoy the love that you have with your boyfriend and just keep on living life. Shannon says in her confessional that she's sad because she knows that her girls still carry the weight of what happened between her and David. I really hope that her and her daughters can finally heal one day from that awful experience. I will say that if anybody should feel any shame, it should be David. Because the way he did his girls like that, a disgusting individual. So now we move on to the next scene and we see Heather at home. She and Dr. Terry are filming an infomercial. We see that Noella has arrived to Heather's house. So Terry and Heather's middle daughter, I think her name is Kat, she opens the door for Noella and she's like, you can wait in the kitchen. My mom is still filming, but she'll be with you in a few minutes. So Noella goes into the kitchen and she's like, hey, Heather. And Heather is like, I'll talk to you later. Like, I'm still filming. Like, you know, sit, I'll meet with you in like one minute. So Noella says in her confessional that Heather knew what time they were going to meet. And because of that, Heather should have been done filming. Then she says that Heather did this on purpose and she wanted her to see her filming because she wanted Noella to be impressed. I'm like, Noella, you're really not all that important for anybody to do all that to impress you. I don't know why you're thinking that much into it, but as a content creator, I can tell you that filming does go over. So again, you're doing a bit much saying that Heather was trying to impress you and she wanted you to see her film. Girl, it's not that deep. Just sit there for a few minutes. It's not going to kill you. And before anybody gets on me, because y'all know that I don't like Noella, you know that I can always give credit where credit's due because while I don't like her, I did like that outfit that she showed up in at Heather's house. That pink and red combo was everything. I liked the shorts. She had that Telfar bag. I said, okay. I said, give us a look. I'm here for it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so now Heather and Terry finally finished filming. And so Heather's like, hey girl, sorry about that. Before we go into my studio, would you like anything to drink, anything to eat? Noella says, no, I'm fine, let's talk. So now they go into Heather's studio slash office and Noella has the nerve to say in her confessional that Heather is borderline a narcissist because in Heather's studio, she had a whole bunch of pictures of herself. That's Heather's home studio slash home office. 
if she wants to have a huge picture of herself blown up, that's her right. How are you going to dictate what she does in her own home? If somebody wants to have a million pictures of them, if I decide to put up a big picture of me instead of this picture in the back, that's my prerogative, is it not? Am I a narcissist if I want to do that? No. So they get the pleasantries out the way. Noelle is saying, you know, I'm taking it one day at a time. It seems like every day is something else. Heather says, yeah, I can imagine. So now Heather says, girl, let's get down to business. I heard through the grapevine that you were out here calling me a phony bitch, yes or no? So now Noella says, look, when I went to lunch with Nicole that day, I was emotional and very raw. So yes, I did throw out phony bitch. So Heather says, got it, I understand. When I heard it, I was like, you know what? She's going through a hard time. So because of that, I'm gonna let that roll off my back and just let it go. Then Heather says, but wait, there's more because Gina told me a few days ago that you had told her that I wasn't to be trusted. Like, what does that mean? And why would you say that I can't be trusted? I'm confused. So Noelle is being all dramatic. She's talking super slowly and she's not getting to the point. She says, remember when I told you that Nicole had told me a lot about her life? Well, I was the one who called her after your party and she told me that some things had changed. So Heather's looking at her like, I'm not following what you're saying. Can you please make it plain because you're talking real cryptically and it's not adding up for me. So now Noella says, I'm talking about the lawsuit with Terry. So Heather's like, um, I still wanna know how that would make you distrustful of me. Like, can you please explain further because I'm still not getting it. And I was confused too. So Noella goes on to say that she saw her girlfriend change after a phone call with Heather. So now we see a clip of when Noella and Nicole were at that lunch and Nicole is saying, I don't want to talk about this lawsuit ever again. Like, let's drop the subject. I don't want to speak about this. It's enough. So I'm like, Noella, that footage right there shows that you're not making any sense because Nicole said that she was fine, she's good, she wants to put that in the past and move on. So what are you talking about? You notice a change in her. I said, girl, you're just pulling stuff out of your ass at this point. So Noella goes on to say that Heather telling Nicole to drop any talk of the lawsuit is disturbing. So Heather says, this isn't a way to start a friendship. And Noella says, well, I agree because you were in your house at your party slamming people against the walls and yelling at people and cursing at people and threatening people. Heather is livid. She's like, girl, what are you talking about? When was I slamming people against walls? Like, that's laughable. So now Noelle is like, well, I mean, I had heard from several people that you would slam folks up against the wall. I know that quite a few of you guys had told me down in the comments in last week's episode that a producer claims that they were slammed up against the wall by Heather. I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. I know that a lot of y'all don't like Heather, okay? And that's fair because she can be a bit grating at times. I'm not gonna lie. And I do like Heather, but I'm also objective and fair. But with all that being said, I could see Heather cursing at people. I could see her maybe being rude but I really can't picture Heather slamming somebody up against the wall. Can you? I'm not saying that it's completely out of the realm of possibility, but I really just can't see Heather pinning up a grown man to the wall. I just can't. And I feel like if that happened, they would have sued Heather so fast. And also Heather is so cognizant of the fact that people would want to sue her and Terry because of how much money they have that she would never put her hands on somebody. If you feel like Heather pinned somebody up to the wall, let me know, but I'm just not really believing it. So now Heather says, Noella, I'm gonna keep it real. I don't think that I can be this friend that you want. Like we can keep it real cordial, keep it real cute, that's it. So now Noella says, you know what, I agree. I don't mind having social friends. We don't have to have any deep friendship. 
Then Heather walks her out of her house and she says, focus on your family because you have a lot going on right now. I was screaming because you know that Heather wanted to curse her clean out. She was pissed. She was just so angry that somebody would even make those sort of accusations that she had slammed somebody up against the wall in her own house. I saw a few people on Twitter praising Noella, saying that, you know, she's not kissing Heather's ass and good for her. But honestly, that wasn't really a flex in my opinion. I thought that she looked crazy trying to spin the narrative that Heather was you know, violent, you know, that Heather is out here trying to silence people. I'm not saying that Heather is an angel because Heather has her stuff too. Let's be very clear. But what Noella was saying, I was like, girl, you are reaching. Let me also just say that if I were Heather, I would have rescinded that invitation to Max's book launch party. She would not be in attendance. You obviously don't like me, so there's no point in you coming. So now we get to the big day and it is Max's book launch party. All the ladies arrive. Noelle is there. I'm like, girl, why are you there? Like I just said, Noella would have been uninvited. You're not showing up to a party that I'm having for my child, okay? When you don't like me, you're calling me a bitch. You're saying that I'm a narcissist. You're saying that I'm throwing people up against the walls. Absolutely not. Stay home. And I would have had security kick her out. Noella and Heather exchange some short pleasantries. And Heather's like, look, while she said hello to Noella, Noella and her are not cool and she's not engaging. So we see Nicole and her boyfriend arrive. And did you guys catch that Nicole hugged everybody except for Noella? Noelle is cutting her eyes at Nicole and then she says, so everybody gets a hug except me, like, got it. Now, sis, you were doing all of that defending your friend, talking about, you know, you hurt my friend when you were at Heather's house and now this same friend is no longer talking to you? What's that about? So we find out that Noella and Nicole are no longer friends because when Noella was on the phone with Nicole, Nicole hung up on her. Child, we see the footage and Noella was complaining that Nicole is not there for her enough. And so Nicole's like, girl, I can't do this. I'm obviously not the friend for you. I'm hanging up. And Noella was upset. Now, let me just say, like I said in my last recap, I still stand by Noella wants sympathy. Don't get me wrong, there are times in life where you do need your friend's support, you do need people to uplift you, but you cannot expect people to drop their lives because you're going through a hard time in life. I know firsthand what it's like, okay? Like, I'm still grieving the death of my father, but trust and believe, I'm not begging or bugging my friends or anybody to help you know, lift me up. You know what I'm saying? Like I have my family to talk to. I have a grief counselor, a therapist to talk to. You know what I'm saying? I would never burden my friends with the responsibility to uplift me. And that's not fair what Noella is doing because she's going through a hard time with this divorce. That's not right. People have lives and families of their own that they need to tend to. I have never been somebody who's going to dump my problems or issues on other people. That's just not me. Because Nicole can't be that emotional crutch for her 24-7, that doesn't make her a bad friend. Again, I really do feel that Noella really does want sympathy and pity, and she wants people to coddle and baby her. And it's like, that's just not how this works. Don't get me wrong. Of course, you should show sympathy to a friend. Of course, you know, it's normal to feel sorry for a friend when they're going through a hard time, but you can't live in that space 24 seven. Eventually you will have to get up out the bed and make something shake. You know what I'm saying? And it's not being mean. It's not, you know, tough love. It's just the truth. And Noelle is saying that if Nicole can't go deep with her, then this friendship is over. I mean, 
that's another thing in life. Everybody's not this super deep friend. Like you need to learn how to compartmentalize your friendships. You have your party friends. You have your friends you go shopping with. You have your friends who you have deep talks with. You have your friends who are strictly for gossip and that's it. And some friendships evolve. Some of your friendships, they were service level. Now they're deep. Some of your friendships were deep and now they're service level. And that's just how the cookie crumbles. Now we see Noella, Gina, and Emily talking, and Noella's relaying the news that Shannon won't be in attendance because she got sick on her way back from Nashville. So now Gina's like, oh, she did, like, whatever. And then Emily asks Gina if she's still, you know, on bad terms with Shannon. Gina's like, you know what, it's whatever. Like, I really don't care about Shannon. Like, she's just over it. I said, Gina, you were just up in Shannon's behind last season. Shannon took you shopping when you guys went to Beverly Hills and you guys did that Rodeo Drive shopping trip. You didn't have any money. And Shannon bought you a bunch of clothes and she spent all that money on you and you were sitting there crying and thanking her. Now all of a sudden you can't stand Shannon. I said, a mess. I can't stand Gina. She's just all about following who has the most money. And because Shannon had the most money last season, that's why she was with Shannon. Now it's Heather. That's why she's up under Heather. So while the party's going on, we see Heather, Terry, and Dr. Jen with her husband all talking. Heather's telling about how when she and Terry went on their first date, Terry told her how he didn't want to see her ever again. And she was like, wait, what? So now Dr. Jen tells a story about how she and her husband met at a breakfast buffet. Then Dr. Jen says that Ryan had to come around to her. And so Heather's like, you know, but you came around, right? And then he says, I'm still coming around. I was like, what? And Heather and Terry were looking at him like, did he really just say that? Like for you to embarrass your wife like that, just say, yes, you know, I love her. You know, it's been love ever since, but you want to be funny and say, well, I'm still coming around. Again, Dr. Jen, this is a hot mess. You seem to be the one who is more in love with him and the fact that you're the breadwinner and he's out here talking about, well, you know, I'm still coming around and he's a stay-at-home dad with his feet kicked up doing nothing and you're bringing home the money. Just a mess all the way around. And as a woman, why would you even want to say that your husband had to come around to you? Shouldn't you be saying that about him? I said... Mm -mm. they'll be divorced if she's back on for season 17 they'll be divorced next season i'm calling it right now so now we see emily and noella at the bar they're having some drinks taking a few shots now at this point in the party emily is shit-faced okay like mama is drunk having a good time she is three sheets to the wind and no judgment over here because we've all had one of those nights. Lord knows I have. <laughs> so anyhow, Emily brings up the Cabo trip. And Noelle is like, what Cabo trip? Well, my invitation definitely got lost in the mail. Now, Emily, here's where I would have cursed you out because there was no reason for you to blurt out the Cabo trip. You know that Heather does not like Noella. Noella is also not feeling Heather. So why are you opening your mouth about anything? And when Noella was saying in her confessional that she didn't expect an invitation from Heather because she refused to kiss Heather's ass, it's like, girl, if you don't care, then why do you seem kind of salty about it? Like, I personally don't want to go to anything where the host doesn't like me. I'm not desperate. I have too much pride. My self-esteem is way too high to be anywhere where the people don't want me there, okay? I only go where I'm celebrated, not tolerated. Now we see Shane come over to Emily and Noella, and Noella brings up their sex life. So we already know that Shane is super awkward about a lot of stuff. And Noelle is like, I think that you two have the hottest sex out of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This is it's much. I said, okay, Noella, you obviously just want to say something because I don't see it. I think that they barely have sex. 
I feel like you could count it on two hands the times that they have had sex. Okay. <laughs> and then Noelle is saying in her confessional how since Shane is so short, he can do all these things with his body. And on top of that, to never count a little man out. I said, no, she did. <laughs> so now we see Emily and Dr. Jen talking and Emily is just plastered. Okay. Mama can barely form a coherent sentence. Like she is screaming for Gina to come over. And Gina's like, I think that it's time for all of us to go home because honey, you're drunk. And we all know how things go left when you're trying to have a conversation and you're super trash like this. Now we see Noella leaving the party. She barely acknowledges Heather. And then we hear Emily say, bye girl, see you in Cabo. So Heather says, who? Like, who's going to Cabo with us? What did you just say? And Emily's like, you didn't invite her, really? And Heather's like, why would I invite somebody who has ill feelings about me on a vacation? Does that make any sense? I would have cursed Emily out. And on top of that, I would have uninvited her to the Cabo trip. Don't play with me like that. Emily was out of line for that. You already know I don't like this woman. She doesn't like me. So why would you open your mouth and invite her on my behalf? That's not how this works. But that's where this episode ends, y'all. And it looks like next week they're going to be in Cabo and it's going to be some drama because it looks like Miss Noella is going to show up uninvited. But y'all, this was another great episode. I have to say, OC is killing it. I'm entertained. And despite them having low ratings this season, I feel like we are really in for a treat and this reunion is also going to be quite lit. But again, thank you all for watching my recap. I hope you all enjoyed. And as always, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all later. Bye.